Customers of Skelec who are in arrears are strongly urged to take advantage of a two-week promotion in which payments can be made in installments and with the normal deposit waived. And with no interest applied to outstanding balances, Corporate Communications Manager Ms. Patrice Harris said Skelec is making it possible for affected customers to get up to date within a 36-month period. Ms. Harris explained that the 1st February to 14th February promotion was implemented in order to tackle the large amount in customer arrears. We are hoping that customers take advantage of this opportunity. The disconnection drive is not so much to scare our customers away, but we want them to come in. And we recognize sometimes when the customers do come in, they don't have that large amount of money to be able to make that initial 30, 40, or 50% deposit. So this is yet another avenue where we are assisting customers. This promotion is only for customers who have never been on a plan before. So if you have been on a plan before and you defaulted on that plan, you're not eligible for this promotion. But if it's your first time with a higher risk and you're a residential customer, this promotion is also not for our commercial customers, you will be eligible to apply for the deferred payment arrangement and choose the amount that you want to make just for the 14 days. After that, we will revert to the initial 30, 40 or 50 percent deposit that is required. Responding to criticism that many persons are adversely affected financially in the COVID-19 pandemic, Ms. Harris said the corporation did assist electricity consumers, but itself needed to operate effectively. The company too has struggled as a result of COVID-19. And uh, interestingly, in doing my research, because I try to pay attention to other utility companies throughout the region, some of them would have resumed this connection as early as November, even with the pandemic being around. For us, there was quite a significant amount of time where we were not doing these connections. I can assure you that earlier in 2020, we had a moratorium for customers that was in that were impacted by COVID-19 financially. Unfortunately, very few customers took advantage of that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so just about over 100 customers came in and applied for that moratorium. However, we are encouraging customers to make a payment. Once you consistently make a payment towards your balance, you are less likely to be a part of the disconnection drive. Right now, there are some customers with some extremely high balances who I can assure you have had these balances prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. Harris said Skelec does not want customers to be out of power for an extended period of time and would prefer customers in arrears to come in and make arrangements. Glenn Bart, SKN Newsline. The Emergence and Affirmation Summit, organized by Vikish Pickering of V Creation, has been dubbed a success by attendees and summit presenters. The event held on Sunday was hosted at the Kuna Caribbean Conference Center in Fortlands and was well attended both in person and pay-per-view online. Presenters include educator Michelina Charles, U.S. entrepreneur Justin J. Rock Fraser, journalist Andre Huey, poet and cultural icon Crichton Pension, Ambassador Jacinth Henry Martin, IT expert Inoite Inanga, Quinn Martin of Empowerment Group of Branches, and keynote speaker Vikish Pickering. Ms. Pickering said she was satisfied with the outcome of the event. Well, I'm satisfied. Uh, the f everybody that I spoke to felt like they got something that they needed, and they're looking forward to more, so I'm satisfied. Summit participants and presenters praised Ms. Pickering for organizing and executing the summit. I think that it was absolutely amazing. You know, initially I came here to minister to present, but I'm grateful that I came here because I received a lot from it. I was inspired. I was challenged, especially as it relates to my mindset and my thought patterns. And I think that I would be able to implement a lot of the things that the presenters said, and especially Vicky. And Vicky, you are awesome. And the platform was amazing. Thank you for the opportunity to share in your greatness and to unleash with you. Very timely events. I honestly have to say that events like these make me sit back and go, wow. Seeing Kids and Nevis has so much talent that 
we really don't grade ourselves. I mean, we should be like, hey, we got this. I'm very happy that Vicky had the courage to do it. I think many people go through the same thing, but to reach to that point, I think courage is the highest order. And for the fact that she was able to take herself through these little steps and share is highly commendable. It was necessary that people find a venue, find an event, find a, a space where they can unburden, where they can unleash, to use Vicky's um, um, terminology, there and share and have a conversation, share ideas, share thoughts, share, share nourishment. The summit was amazing, but you know, I knew it was going to be because Vicky, she's an amazing human being. And I've known her for a really long time, and she always had this talent of storytelling and moving you and inspiring you to want to do better. I admire her so much as a person. Well, it was great, it was a great experience. <laughs> you know, and a little after in between, and it teach me a lot about self-esteem, self-love. This was definitely needed. Uh, Vicky said in one of her videos leading up to the event that you would get a shock. Um, and this was definitely the shock that a lot of us needed. A lot of us are dealing with things that are personal, growth, um, struggling with procrastination, struggling with wondering what your purpose is. And this just puts you in that mindset of understanding that there, there can be more, there should be more. One of the high points of the event was the unveiling of a new social media platform, Bestimony, which is designed to encourage the sending of positive messages and affirmations to persons. We'll have more on that platform in a subsequent report. I'm Andre Huey for SKN Newsline. February is Black History Month. Each day on our newscast, SKN Newsline will be highlighting black iconic Caribbean people who have made a valuable contribution to our societies. Sir Arthur Lewis was born in St. Lucia, then still part of the British Windward Islands Federal Colony, the fourth of five sons of George and Ida Lewis. Lewis's initial career choice was to become an engineer, but he said this seemed pointless since neither the government nor the white firms would employ a black engineer. At the age of 18, he earned the government scholarship to attend the London School of Economics, becoming the first black individual to, ex to gain acceptance there. While enrolled to study for a Bachelor of Commerce degree, he would achieve similar success as he did at grade school. Lewis's academic superiority was noticed and admired by his peers and professors. He became the first black faculty member at LSE in 1938. In 1947, Lewis married Gladys Jacobs and they had two daughters together. He served as an economic advisor to numerous African and Caribbean governments, including Nigeria, Ghana, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, and Barbados. When Ghana became independent in 1957, Lewis was appointed as the country's first economic advisor. He helped draw up its first five-year development plan from 1959 to 1963. In 1959, Lewis returned to the Caribbean region when appointed Vice-Chancellor of the University of the West Indies. He was knighted by the British government in 1963 for his achievements and for his contributions to economics. That year, he was also appointed a university professor at Princeton University, becoming the first black instructor to be given full professorship and moved to the United States. In 1970, he was selected as the first president of the Caribbean Development Bank, serving in that capacity until 1973. Sir Arthur Lewis received the Nobel Prize in Economics in 1979, sharing it with Theodore Schultz for their pioneering research in economic development research with particular consideration of the problems of developing countries. He died on June 15, 1991 in Bridgetown, Barbados. For 2021, Smart Electronics is giving you the best deals you can ever imagine. From January 1st until April 30th, you will get the best deals in the entire federation. Plus, that's not all. Get extra special deals on Valentine's Day on all items store-wide, such as cell phones, 85-inch smart TVs, laptops, washing machines, refrigerators, AC units, small appliances, and much more. Visit us. We're located at Port Zante, opposite the food court or call us at 466-4271. This promotion is valid until April 30th. Terms and conditions apply. 
Caravana on Liverpool Row is your anything you want store in St. Kitts. They have a wide variety of just about everything. Ladies and men's clothing, shoes, children's clothing, toys, housewares of all kinds, small appliances like clothes heaters, microwaves, electric kettles and more, cosmetics, perfumes, cosmetic jewelry and much, much more. Their prices are unbeatable and customer service is second to none. Shop at Caravana on Liverpool Robastair. Call 465 1745. At, at Caravana, Caravana find, find value, value supplies, supplies at great, great prices. prices. I feel good. Come to Vibes Beach Bar and Grill at the Frigate Bay Strip, your place for the best selection of local dishes. Join us for lunch mahi mahi, barbecue ribs, fresh caught snapper salmon, lobster, and our world-famous Vibes Wings at economically sound prices. Dinner is served from the deck or the golden sands of the Frigate Bay Beach. Join us for birthdays, business meetings, or just for fun in a family-friendly environment. Open daily from 11 a.m. Vibes Beach Bar and Grill. Great food, hospitality, entertainment, and good vibes. Call 465 465- 8423 for reservations and inquiries. I feel good. The Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine is no second class vaccine. The assurance from WHO PAHO country representative Dr. Erica Wheeler. Speaking at the ministry's virtual media conference today, Dr. Wheeler responded to questions about the efficacy of the vaccine due to be delivered to Trinidad and Tobago next month. Mahalia Joseph Wharton has more. PAHO WHO country representative Dr. Erica Wheeler said the AstraZeneca vaccine, the vaccine Trinidad and Tobago will receive under the COVAX facility, has been approved by international bodies like the European Medicines Agency. WHO has a global responsibility to approve the quality, safety, and efficacy of all vaccines that are released for the public. So we are talking about 194 member states. The technical reviews, both of PAHO at the regional level as well as at the international level, are based on science. Minister of Health Terence Dialsing reminded that healthcare workers, the elderly, especially those in long stay homes and essential workers, are some of the groups that are first in line for the vaccine. He said consent forms would be given to the relatives of those in long stay homes. The most vulnerable, the most exposed will get a first shot, a first tranche, a first bite at that vaccination cherry. After we have done that, depending on the number of vaccines left from that first tranche, or if we get more, then we start what we call our mass vaccination program. The vaccine will be delivered to Trinidad and Tobago by March 2021. Trinidad and Tobago has been allocated an initial 100,000 to 120,000 doses. The vaccine will be distributed through the public health system. The minister added that persons under 18 will not be vaccinated in this first phase. Mahalia Joseph Wharton, TTT News. Former Minister of Health Dr. Emmanuel Hussein is using his journey with polio to encourage citizens to take the COVID-19 vaccine once it arrives. During the Ministry of Health's virtual media briefing, he shared his experiences after he contracted polio at the age of eight. He did not receive the vaccine and underwent a series of procedures to save his life. I went into a coma. I spent two weeks in a coma, a month in the iron lung, which interestingly enough was in San Fernando Hospital at the time. They had to bring the iron lung on a truck from San Fernando <laughs> for just me because I was the only one who would stop breathing. And I remained in the iron lung for over a month. He said after that, he spent the next six months in isolation, totally paralyzed. When he was able to move again and breathe on his own, he would spend another year of his life at the Princess Elizabeth home. At which time I had my first operation, which required the transfer of muscles uh, from my hamstrings to my tri- to, to the uh, quadriceps. 
then I came out. I then had to go back to school. Um, my mother insisted I go to school right away. Then had to have another of operations, you know, over the years. Dr. Hussein said all of this was as a result of polio, a viral infection that could have been prevented had he taken the vaccine. He said the introduction of the polio vaccine saved many from going through similar experiences. The Ministry of Health has reported two new cases of COVID-19 in Trinidad and Tobago. The ministry says of the two new positive cases, none are recently repatriated persons. The number of positive cases reported reflects the samples taken during the period 29th to 31st January and not the last 24 hours. There are 254 active positive cases of COVID-19. The main suspect in yesterday's killing of a woman in a church in Trelawney has surrendered to the police. Deputy Commissioner of Police in Charge of Crime, Fitz Bailey, gave the update at a virtual press briefing today. He revealed that the man turned himself in in the presence of his attorney. We pretty much have this case solved at the moment. Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson at a virtual press conference on Monday following an incident that has left members of a church in Trelawney in shock. 51-year-old Andrelo Garwood, a resident of Danieltown Road in the parish, was shot dead at the Agape Christian Fellowship Church in Falmouth. It's reported that her killer was seated in the congregation right behind her. On Sunday, the police reported that three men were taken into custody. And on Monday, more progress. What you saw was a combination of several agencies within the JCF. The Intel Operation CID played a critical role, as well as the Major Investigation Division. And I think maybe this is breaking news that I'm going to let you know that the suspect is now in custody. Um, he was taken in by his attorney a short while ago. The, yes, that's a suspect. The suspect, who we believe, actually pulled the trigger. Based on the investigations so far, the police have a motive. I can confirm that it is a family dispute. Um, based on the investigation that we have done, there's no other reason. We know that there are other theories that are out, out there, but it is solely a family dispute. Family members who should be taking care of each other, who should be looking about the interests of other family members are not doing that but are instead over property over wealth over items are actually arranging and premeditating the killing of other family members we saw that as you say most recently in this case we saw it at an earlier case in Trelawney. we saw that in a case in saint mary where this sort of behavior has been playing out. In the meantime, concerns have been raised about the more than 100 murders recorded so far this year. The police commissioner says criminals have been moving across the different parishes. What we've been seeing is a certain fluidity of criminal action. People move back and forth across the country uh, to, uh, to commit crimes, to make arrangements with other gangs to, to do crimes, to do crimes on their behalf. Having noticed this, the police say they have been putting measures in place to intercept criminals in order to stop the killings. The commissioner says intra-gang rivalry is also at the center of some of the murders. In the meantime, the police commissioner says a quick response team will be rolled out within the next few weeks to respond to the flare-up of gang activities in sections of the corporate area. They will be um, trained in the tactical use and are being trained in the tactical use of motorcycles and their weapons to respond quickly to gang activities and other um, threats to the lower part of Kingston. We're continuing that process and it's going to expand up into the, the uh, northern part of Kingston and St. Andrew.
It's the battle of the internet giants with Apple calling out Facebook over consumer privacy. Without mentioning Facebook by name, Apple CEO Tim Cook threw down the gauntlet at a data privacy conference last month. Technology does not need vast troves of personal data stitched together across dozens of websites and apps in order to succeed. But that's exactly how Facebook does succeed, by scooping up vast amounts of data about its 2.8 billion active users in order to allow other companies to bombard them with advertisements, supposedly tailored to their specific interests. Facebook gets almost all of its revenue through ads. If you're like me and just about everybody else, you probably haven't printed out Facebook's terms of service and studied them. But experts say what you might find in these pages could surprise you. Facebook is probably keeping track of what you're doing when you're not on Facebook and when you're not even logged into Facebook. Facebook is able to get data on what you're up to when you're using all kinds of apps, or when you're browsing on websites that have no official connection to Facebook. I think that would surprise a lot of people. Apple plans a major privacy change in the coming months. We are deploying powerful new requirements to advance user privacy throughout the App Store ecosystem. Instead of poking around in your phone's settings to opt out of data sharing, Apple will now require apps to give users a plain choice. When they open an app, the app is forced to prompt them to say, hey, do you want to let us track you or not? And that's expected to make a big difference because most people don't actually want their behavior to be tracked and shared between uh, various apps and websites. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg says Apple doesn't really care about privacy, it cares about profits. Apple has every incentive to use their dominant platform position to interfere with how our apps and other apps work, Zuckerberg told investors in January. Apple may say they're doing this to help people, but the moves clearly track their competitive interests, he said. The App Store's new opt-in feature could cut into Facebook's revenue by 10%, experts say. That revenue was nearly $86 billion last year. Rob Reynolds, Al Jazeera, Los Angeles. Only the bold braved the cold and took to New York City streets Monday. With snow falling at a rate of five to 10 centimeters an hour, snow plows and shovelers could barely keep up. The city declared a state of emergency and all but essential workers were asked to stay home. Still, some couldn't resist. I'm from California, so this is, does not happen over there, which to me is something really cool because I don't get to experience it. So yeah, I kind of like it. COVID had already reduced traffic and tourists here, even in the city's most iconic neighborhoods like Times Square. This is a very snowy, a lot of snow out here in Times Square. Um, the people are still out here. We see kids running around, throwing snowballs. People are enjoying taking pictures. So we're out here. We got some good tunes and some coffee and we're making the best of it. But the storm stopped vaccination efforts throughout the Northeast in their tracks. Vaccinations are canceled today. They're also going to be canceled tomorrow. Based on what we are seeing right now, uh, we believe that tomorrow uh, getting around the city will be difficult. Uh, it'll be icy, it'll be treacherous. We do not want seniors, especially out in those conditions. The storm is yet another blow for New York City restaurants who've suffered tremendously amidst the coronavirus pandemic. Only outdoor dining is allowed for another two weeks. And needless to say, not a lot of people will be dining out today. The storm is making its way up the coast with high winds threatening power outages from Virginia through Philadelphia and into New England states. But there was still fun to be had from skiing in Central Park. And the plan today is to ski until I get too tired and have to go home. To watching pandas go for a slide in Washington, D.C.'s Smithsonian National Zoo. Proving even a major storm isn't all bad. Kristen Salumi, Al Jazeera. Stay abreast with news on St. Martin with SMN News. Visit www.smn-news.com for up-to-date news, scoops, opinions, and hard-hitting facts. SMN, SMN News. We tell, we tell it, it like it is. It is. 
visit our website www.smn-news.com. It's the new and improved SK News Line Android mobile app. With the SK News Line app, you can watch your news reports, the SK News Line newscast, sports, special features, and so much more. You can also send us a WhatsApp or call us directly. Go in the Google Play Store, search SK News Line, and download the app today. The SK News Line mobile app. News on the go. For the finest in pastries and baked products, your only choice has to be Bryden's Bakery, located on Main Street, New Road, St. Peter's. They offer the best in breads, cakes, cheesecakes, cupcakes, cookies, and much more. Visit their cafe and savor breakfast sandwiches, coffee, espresso, and ice cream. Bryden's Bakery also specializes in a variety of healthy breads, cakes, cookies, pies, and pastries for all your special events. Call 667-1505. Opening hours 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday to Saturday and 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. on Sundays for ice cream Sundays. Bryden's Bakery, simply the best. We at Multigraphics are dedicated to providing quality products and service to our customers. Our team takes pride in the craftsmanship and is passionate about its work. Every job, large or small, is important. Most of our customers come to us through referrals. That's because our number one priority is service. We serve a wide variety of customers, such as restaurants, retail stores, manufacturers, trucking companies, and many more. Our capabilities include design, production, and installation. How can we help? We are located at Bird Rock at the Woods Wright compound. Call us at 869-763-1511 or 784-491-7599. Multigraphics. On behalf of management and staff of Alpha Plus, we want to wish you a happy new year and a prosperous 2021. Located on the Collins Street Gut, Bastyr St. Kitts. Bring your car to Auto Plus Car Wash to remove water stains, wiper marks, get your doors, roof panel cleaned, seat floor mats, buffing, headlights, and engine wash. You get quality service at the best price at Auto Plus Car Wash. They really care for your car. Call 765 5140 or visit them on the Collins Street Gut, Bastyr St. Kitts. Auto, Auto Plus, Plus Car Wash. Where well, service, service is, is number one. one.